Hey, what's up guys? My IKEA hack platform bed. It's doing tremendous on YouTube. I built this thing in 2015. It's got hundreds of thousands of likes, tons of comments, and, and I'm thrilled at how many people have actually built the bed and sent me pictures. So not all the comments have been positive. There are some people that say they can't build this bed for a couple of reasons. The number one most common reason is that it's attached to the wall. Either people say, they don't trust it being attached to the wall, that it would fall down. Or they say they can't attach it to the wall because they are renting or they have cinder block walls or maybe brick walls or something like that where they just can't attach the bed to the wall. So that's the number one complaint and I am going to reconfigure this bed into a freestanding version. The number two complaint is the size and it is big. It's a full-size mattress plus a bank of cabinets along the side. It's a pretty big footprint, and some people say it's just too big for their rooms. So that's another thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to take this big bank of cabinets, and I'm going to slide it under the mattress, and that's what's going to save on the footprint. The sacrifice is it's not going to have as much storage space underneath, but that's a trade-off that you'd have to make a decision on if you want to, you know, one way or the other. So that's what I've got planned for this video. Stay tuned. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Lisa, who also provided me with a mattress and a small commission if you purchase a product using my link. I started by dismantling the existing bed framing and removed all the stuff from under the storage area. I reused all the components from the original design, even the screws. I turned the long bank of cabinets and positioned them far enough from the wall so the doors would open fully. Then I placed the opposite side using the measurements of the mattress. To make the bed freestanding, I needed to make two frames that act like mini walls to support the rails. I used 1x3 pine here which is plenty strong enough and maximizes the usable space. These frames have three studs sandwiched between a top and bottom plate, just like a wall. I cut some 45 degree angled supports from scrap 3 quarter inch plywood and used them to stiffen the frames and attach the melamine sheets. Melamine is a white chemical resin that feels like hard plastic. Melamine sheets are 3 quarter inch thick, dense particle board sandwiched between two layers of that white plastic. It's very heavy and durable, and it matches my IKEA cabinets perfectly. This edge banding is made from the same material, but it has glue on the back. I attached it to the cut edges with an iron. I used a hobby iron, but you can use a regular laundry iron as well. It's a little wider than the board, so I just trimmed the excess with a small block plane for a nice clean look. Now I used the melamine to close in the foot of the bed, but you can obviously use additional cabinets here if you want. I attached the melamine to the cabinet after drilling pilot holes, using tape as a depth gauge so I didn't drill too far. I did a quick test fit to see how my frames would support the rails. Then I secured the frame to the melamine by screwing through the angle braces. These pilot holes are for screws that go through the melamine into the step cabinets on the other side. The frame under the head of the bed is only attached to the cabinets on both sides. The bed isn't attached to the wall at all. I reattached the 1x4 rails on both banks of cabinets, but I needed to add spacer blocks on the left side to compensate for the thickness of the melamine. I reused the same 2x4 center support from the old bed and attached it with a screw from under the frame. I reused all the 1x4 slats from the old bed as well, but had to shorten them by 15 inches because I pushed the cabinets under the bed. 
I also drilled new pilot holes and attached the slats to all three rails using inch and a quarter screws. I used two spacer blocks cut from scrap wood to space the slats three inches apart. I reattached the gray paneling with a couple of screws. The carpet tape from the original bed was still very sticky as you can tell from the cracked panel, so I didn't bother replacing it. Now what good is a new bed without a new mattress? I decided this was a good opportunity to upgrade Becca's old inner spring mattress to a new foam mattress from Lisa. Lisa is a direct shipment manufacturer that makes your mattress to order and delivers it to you compressed in a box with free shipping. The mattress has great reviews and comes with a 100 night risk-free guarantee, including free return shipping, so you really have nothing to lose. I've been sleeping on a foam mattress for years and love it because it never sags like a spring mattress, so I'm confident this one will be great for Becca. Click on the link in the video description to get $75 off a Lisa mattress. Many people say they'd prefer to sink the mattress below the tops of the cabinets, but I disagree with that approach because it would make it much more difficult to change the sheets. Here you can see that it's trivial to make this bed by simply sliding the mattress away from the wall a few inches. If you're considering building this version for a small child, you might consider putting a bed rail under the mattress. So there you have version 2 of my IKEA Hack platform bed in a freestanding design with a smaller footprint. If you'd like to build an exact copy, the blueprints are available on my website. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and share this video. Thanks. Visit my website handydad.tv for more great ideas and information. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are posted. <laughs> I know you want to come up again. You're not coming up. You can't. You can't.